Alright, thanks for watching and today I would like to present you a proof of Clairaut's theorem that's so elegant you'll probably be like why didn't anyone tell me about this? So what does Clairaut's theorem say? It says that if fxy and fyx are continuous then in fact they must be equal. And the way this is usually proven is by rewriting those as limits of difference quotients and showing that they're equal but instead of using limits here, we will actually use integration. Wow, who would have known? And in fact, consider the following. Let R be an arbitrary rectangle, namely AB times CD. And what we would like to do, we would like to integrate both of those functions over this arbitrary rectangle. So let's start with f of yx. And let's integrate it from a to b, so integral from a to b, integral from c to d, f of yx dx dy. And by the way, here's one instance where you need continuity, because if a function is continuous, you can integrate this. Now, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this just becomes the integral from c to d and the integral from a to b of fy, again x comma y, with respect to x, dx dy. But now you're integrating a derivative, so this just becomes the integral from c to d of, let's see, fy of, so now you replace x with a and b, so fy of b comma y minus fy of a comma y i this is so exciting and then dy but now notice you have another uh, integral of a derivative so you can use the fundamental theorem of calculus again and get that this becomes i believe f of bd minus f of bc and then minus f of AD and then minus minus so plus F of AC. Okay. So this integral becomes this weird uh, uh, value and remember this because this will be useful in a second. Now we did this for F of YX now let's just do it for F of XY. So let's integrate this all right, so now let's consider the other term. I believe f of x, y, okay, and then dx, dy. And we integrate this, let's say, from a to b, and then c to d, again, over the rectangle. Now, let's look at the previous case with f of y, x. What was nice is that we have f of y, x, dx, dy to which we could directly use a fundamental theorem of calculus. But here, the order seems to be wrong because we have f of xy dx dy. Man, if only we could interchange this dx and dy, then we would be pr pretty much done because we would just repeat the other case. But wait a moment, isn't there a theorem we can, that allows us to interchange this? Yes, there is, and it's called It's Me Fubini. <laughs> yes, so it's precisely by Fubini's theorem that we're allowed to interchange the two things. And by the way, what's nice about this, it explains precisely why we need continuity, because Fubini, one of the requirements, if you'd like, is continuity of this. So it holds if this function is continuous. And so by continuity of f of x, y, we can use Fubini and write this as, so the integral dy dx. But now remember, we also have to interchange those two things. So I think integral from c to d, integral from a to b, and again now f of x, y, so f of x differentiated with respect to y of dy dx and then now we can just use the same spiel and write this as the integral from a to b 
now I guess we had f of x. So now x comma d minus f of x, um, x comma c, and then dx. And then again, now again, we can fundamental theorem of calculus this, and we get f of, I think, d comma d minus f of a comma d minus f of, let's say, b comma c plus f of a comma c minus minus and let's see what we get so here we have f of b d minus f of a d minus f of b c plus f of a c f of b d minus f of a d plus f of a c minus f of b b c so this is the same so in particular we can conclude that the integral of this equals to the integral of that. Okay. So that is the crucial point. So what did we find so far? We found that if you integrate f of yx over that rectangle, it's the same as integrating f of xy over the rectangle. f of xy dx dy. And so if you take the difference, you basically get that the integral over that arbitrary rectangle of f of yx minus f of xy dx dy equals zero. And usually if those are not continuous, we cannot conclude anything. But here, because it's continuous, we can actually conclude something very important. Namely, you have this continuous function, and I'm telling you that no matter which rectangle you integrate it on, the answer is zero. What you conclude is actually that the inside function has to be identically equal to zero. And here's why. Suppose not. Suppose it's not zero at a certain point. Without loss of generality, assume it's positive at that point. Then, because it's continuous and positive at, let's say, this point x, it has to be positive on a little ball of radius epsilon. But then, you can always fit a very small rectangle inside that ball. So, what we get is this function inside that rectangle is positive, so the integral also has to be positive. But it contradicts the fact that the integral is zero. So what do we conclude? It's never non-zero at a point. So this function has to be identically zero. And so those two functions have to be the same. And that proves Clairaut's theorem. So you see no messy different quotients, just a very elegant integration. And of course, what's nice about this, first of all, it explains why we need continuity in this last crucial step and in Fubini's theorem. But also, uh, you see, this was very local. We don't actually need that it's continuous everywhere. We just need that it's continuous even at a little point. You know, like those two functions are continuous at a point and maybe at the neighborhood of that point. And that's enough. So it's a very local thing. Now, before we end this, I do want to mention a really cool proof also using Green's theorem. So don't stop the party just yet. Because remember, Green's theorem, uh, it works for any kind of vector field. So any smooth vector field doesn't need to be conservative. So suppose now we have a function f such that f of x, y, and f of y, x are continuous. Then I want to show that they're equal. So given a function f, here's the trick. Consider the following vector field, which is called the gradient field, which is f of x, f of y. And I do want to mention this one only works in uh, two dimensions. I think the previous one uh, probably worked for any dimensions. I didn't check that. But the point is, in this case, consider the following vector field, and let's integrate this over any closed curve any simple closed curve. So any curve for which Green's theorem applies. Then, on the one hand, so 
equals to integrate f dotted with the r by Green's theorem, this equals to quixotic pi m. So the double integral over the interior of qx, so this is q and this is p, so qx, which is fyx, and py, which is fxy, Again, and we did not claim that those are equal. Okay. So on the one hand, we have the integral over the interior of this function, f of yx minus f of xy. On the other hand, remember that this is a gradient. So this is the line integral of the gradient of f dotted with dr. But now we can just use the fundamental theorem of line integrals, which just says that this is f of the ending point minus f of the starting point. We're here, we have this closed curve, so because we have this closed curve, the beginning point is the same as the ending point. So those two things are equal, and we get that this is zero. So now essentially, for any arbitrary region d, we get that this integral equals zero, but by the same spiel as before, so because this is continuous, we actually get that those two functions have to be equal. f of x, y. So now tell me in the comments which proof did you like more? The difference quotient proof that I haven't really done, the integration proof, or the Green's theorem proof. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.